South Africa recognizes April as Health Awareness Month in line with the World Health Day celebrated in the first week of every month, uh, every year. But uh, where do we really stand as a country as far as health and healthcare is concerned? And do we really have a cause for celebrations? Bahai Tsuketabo Mulukwane, welcome to this edition of uh, Soweto Today. Tonight we look at the healthcare system in South Africa as we recognize Health Awareness Month in the country as well as menstrual health in girls and young women. Joining me in studio to kickstart the conversation is the Assistant Director of Health Promotion at the Department of Health, Makoloi Nakedi. She joins me in studio this evening. Makoloi, much appreciated for coming in. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Tavo. I mean, um, you know, let's start the conversation by just looking at the uh, Health Awareness uh, Month and uh, its importance. Uh, you know, uh, normally, uh, what does it seek to serve and, uh, uh, you know, why is it really important to dedicate uh, this month to health? Yes, the seventh of every month, or of, of the seventh of April, every year, yeah. we celebrate this day because World Health Organization, which we normally say WHO, it was founded in 1948 on the 7th of April. So we are really trying to recognize this day and also commemorate this day so that we remember that they want to create awareness to our community and also concentrate on topic of concerns. For an example, when you say topic of concerns, we are talking about diabetes, yeah. uh, HIV, hypertension, attention not also neglecting other diseases when you talk about neglected tropical diseases we normally do not say much about them but recently we have now to, uh, started to embark on them and also uh, make people aware about such diseases for an example bilhazia leprosy you mm -hmm. know we never talk about them but we are creating awareness to the community with these diseases let's talk about the theme for this year i mean uh, the theme for the awareness uh, this awareness month and uh, what would be the key focus areas under the slogan that we normally say health for all we now have a theme that was created remember that the themes are created every year by WHO. Now the theme for this year, it says, my health, my right. What are we saying to the, to, to the community? We are saying it is your health to access the services from the Department of Health. And these services are free of charge. You are not going to be charged. You are not discriminated. Whether you are poor, whether you are rich, you can come to our services and access such services for free. Mm. I mean, normally, you know, during this month, people would say that uh, the Department of Health is just wasting time with these awareness months uh, because, uh, you know, people would say that, look, we go to health facilities and we get bad treatment and stuff. But that's a topic for another day. I mean, I, I, I want to understand the campaigns and awareness drives um, that, uh, you know, uh, your department will be um, um, uh, partaking in and also um, uh, to what end? Uh, we are having many awareness uh, campaigns that we are doing. Tabo, I want to say to you that we are not concentrating on awareness when April comes yeah. because we are saying it's a World Health Day. So we are saying we got a health calendar that uh, gives us a time to go back and check what are other awarenesses that we can do, what, what are other things that we can do for the community so that they can understand uh, the services that we are giving to them. For an example, I may say to you, we have already started. Our Minister of Health, Joe Partha, together with uh, our MEC, Manto Ralehoku, they went to Ekuguleni, where they were giving people information about the services that the department is giving mm -hmm. so that they can understand what to expect in these services. So what I'm saying to you, we are saying we are not uh, relaxing back. We are not uh, sitting back. We are coming to the people. We are giving them information. The other uh, awarenesses that we have done already, we went to Rent Easter Show, where we took services to the Easter Show. People were enjoying themselves, but we said, no, these people, they need to know about our health facilities. Together with partners, we are having our uh, forensic department, where they were telling about, we are very excited, Tabo. Yeah. We have a new thing where people have died and you cannot recognize them. So we are having a fingerprint where 
if you can't recognize the body, this fingerprint will tell you who is this person that has died. And we are able to link them to the families. You know, we, we are having our mosharis that are full of bodies that are unknown. So this mm. is an, a very exciting thing that has happened into the Department of Health. It was there at Randy's show telling people about this. And then we also have EMS. EMS, the ambulances, they were telling about us about how to resuscitate people yeah. when people are having accidents, jaws of life, what to expect, what are the machines that they are using when they are opening uh, those cars so that people can understand and explain to others what to expect when, they come, when, when the time comes. Other services that we are having, at, there's a lot that I can tell you now, mm -hmm. but we are having a tish. I need to tell you it is township informal settlement and hostels. It says we are going to this uh, township, we are going to the hostels, we are bringing mobiles, mobile clinic where people, we can vaccinate uh, children that are not vaccinated. Men, men are afraid to come to our hospitals, they are afraid to come to our facilities because why? They feel that uh, the queues are long, you know, they feel that many people that are in the facilities are women. But we are saying to them, we are coming to you, so that you can access our services free of charge. I mean, um, uh, very interesting indeed. I mean, you've highlighted quite a lot of issues. I mean, despite all the challenges that the Department of Health is having, um, you know, uh, over a period of um, a few years uh, now, but we can see a lot of strides, as you said, uh, you, with the programs that you are bringing uh, there. Uh, I mean, I wanted to talk about the impact of this to the greater society. I mean, obviously, some, somehow, as you're saying, we go out there, hostels, informal settlements, we are providing the necessary services. Obviously, it must have an impact. Yes, it does have an impact, a tremendous one, I may say, because when we go out, we take in the services to the people. What are we doing? We are offloading the pressure in the facilities. Yeah. And now we are reducing the queues. People are no more sitting long in the uh, queues. We are also identifying uh, the, the people that we call lost to follow up. Yeah. The people that were given medication, for example, TB, and then they felt that they are, they, they are getting better and decided to sit back. So when we go there, we are able to reorientate them to the services. Then we inform them about importance of finishing their medication because we, we know that we can have other illnesses if you don't finish your your uh, uh, your medication so these are are, are very uh, 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 an impact they are making an impact in our uh, health facilities because another thing that i may tell you we also give services to undocumented those people, when we go to the, the communities, they come to us, they also get services, and we are not discriminating them. Makolo, we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, I want us to touch on, uh, you know, uh, various challenges also that are being faced by the Department of Health there. Uh, we're going to take a quick ad break. Uh, let's uh, take a breather. that we're coming back after this. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tambo Mulukwani. We are in conversation on healthcare in South Africa with uh, Makoloi Nekedi, who is the Assistant Director of Health Promotion at the Department of Health. Uh, she's joining me in studio uh, this evening. Makoloi, much appreciated uh, for staying on. I mean, um, you know, um, my, my question is, uh, you know, I wanted to know, I mean, you've spoken you know, lengthy about uh, offloading the pressure in the healthcare system by taking the programs to the people there. But no, I mean, how, where do we stand uh, as a country in terms of the overall pressure of the healthcare system? I mean, uh, are, are, are we really where we're supposed to be in terms of, you know, giving out those services to the people? Uh, Tabo, I must say to you that we are not really there, but we are striving to be there. You know, we've got the NHI, the National Health Insurance, where we want to make sure that people are getting better services. This, we are saying to them, even if you don't have the medical aid, you will get the better services that are same by like pr private uh, facilities. So we are getting there bit by bit, but we are having uh, fast queues where we want people to come in with appointments, get their treatment, 
go home, not wait for long. We are also trying to, 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 to have help desk where people come in, they're not wasting time, they know where to be reshoveled wherever they, they want to be. Mm. I'm, I'm, actually, I, I don't want to get into the issue of the NHI because of, you know, there's quite a lot of discussions uh, when it comes to that already. Uh, the, you know, we cannot afford doctors uh, the necessary employment as we're seeing a lot of protests that are happening across the country there. But, I mean, talking about doctors there, uh, I mean, what are your thoughts? I mean, don't you think the health system should try by all means to try and, uh, you know, um, absorb the doctors and other healthcare uh, or officials? Because we know that uh, the health department is struggling, uh, you know, with staffing. Uh, uh, because of uh, even if we might have problems in terms of the budget and, and other things but somewhere somehow there needs to be something that needs to be done particularly in making sure that those people are being absorbed to the system and make sure that they deliver the services to the people because we cannot have long queues every single day. Uh, Tabo, this is a very sensitive issue when we talk about doctors because the Department of Health is busy dealing with this issue. If I may say to you, it is a duty care of the Department of Health. They are not relaxing. They know that we have uh, many doctors that are waiting to be absorbed, absorbed in our system. Uh, but however, it's a sensitive issue that I cannot go through uh, right now because they are still busy with it, Tabo. Mm. Um, how far are we, you know, as far as improvements in terms of um, adequate health care to, um, you know, far-flung areas, I mean, remote areas and, 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 and stuff. We know that there are small clinics there, but obviously some, somehow uh, services, they tend to take time to get to those people. Yeah. Remember earlier I talked about TISH. Now, we are doing this TISH every week where we are recognizing such people, the people that are not able to access our health services. And we are doing this in partnership with other departments. We are not doing it alone so that we know that other problems besides health, for an example, if I may say home affairs, we are bringing them in, we are bringing SASA, we are bringing a social uh, department so that we know that we can deal with other issues in such, such remote areas. So the TISH is helping us to cover many things that we were not able to cover. This was pronounced by our Premier and it was implemented by uh, our MEC. It's doing well and we see that uh, people in the hostels are also able to get uh, services. People in those remote areas where the cars are not able to go through, the ambulances are not able to go through, we know now that we have a way of reaching such people through teach campaigns. Just lastly, Mayor Makolo, before I let you go, I mean, what are other plans, uh, you know, does the department have uh, for the growth and progression, uh, you know, of the department uh, here on out? And, you know, what support do you need as the department? I mean, from, from uh, you know, other departments or maybe treasury uh, to be able to execute those programs so that you can align your programs throughout the country. I know that you are doing it, but obviously support is needed somewhere, somehow. Tabo, I want to say to you, we have recognized that if we work together with other stakeholders, we are able to get support. We are roaming them in. We are roaming people such as churches. We are roaming in people uh, such as uh, schools. We are roaming in counselors, gatekeepers, so that they can assist us in accessing other people. You know, there are traditional issues that sometimes they are blocking uh, what we need to give to yeah. the people as Department of Health. So if we bring in the traditional illness, the faith-based organization, the civil societies, we are able to reach many people. Memako Lodi Nakedi, they're much appreciated for coming in uh, this evening and talking to us. Thank you very much. That was uh, Marco Loit Nakedi, who is the Assistant Director of Health Promotion at the Department of Health, speaking to us about the healthcare system in the country as we recognize Health Awareness Month this month. He's saying that, look, I mean, she's saying that, look, we are trying by all means to make sure that we get all those services 
to the people out there. You heard it from her uh, right here on So It's Today. Let's take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching So It's Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. We are getting closer to the end of the show, but we still continue the conversation on health as we recognize Health Awareness Month. Uh, this month. Now we shift gears and look at menstrual health with a focus on innovations that are here to help girls and women to achieve this. Now joining us in studio is Tiribadi Livadi, who is the Hauteng Provincial Manager at uh, Love Life Organization to speak to us more about this. Mr. Livadi, much appreciated for coming and welcome to the show. Thank you and good afternoon to all of you as much appreciated. I mean, um, you know, I, I want us to talk about the importance of, um, uh, you know, for Love Life to focus on menstrual health education uh, in teenagers and young women um, right now. Uh, obviously, there's quite a lot of, you know, things that you can focus on, but specifically you targeted this one for now. Yes, we, we have a story to tell. You know, out of implementing our programs in healthcare facilities, in a, uh, out of school youth in public platforms we have a story that young girls are having challenges in communicating issues related to menstrual health and hygiene to their parents firstly to their educators at school and to the uh, public or parents in general and that is a problem because then it affects their attendance in in schools mm -hmm. it affects their mental health and, 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 you know, they, they end up, you know, confused or having lack of confidence. And so we've decided to tap on that. And luckily, UNICEF was available to assist us in launching this new OK app that seeks to address these gaps. Mm. What do you think is a major problem? Uh, I mean, in, is it uh, the inadequacies of, of the healthcare system in order to focus on certain things such as menstrual health and stuff because you look at the education that's happening in schools uh, you know there is a gap there because uh, you know the education system is rushing the curriculum also to make sure that they meet their targets as a department do you think there is a gap that needs to be filled there in order also to assist these young people because you know once they are not talking about these things and then obviously they will somewhere somehow you know just keep it to themselves and you would see problems in schools surely there's a gap like i'm saying it doesn't start at school it started at home where there's no communication yeah. there's no information education on menstrual health then it goes to school uh, we, we are happy now that we have the, the uh, comprehensive sexuality education uh, as, as a content now in schools. But the challenge is the very same educators that we want them to also impart, they, they, they are of our generation. It's yeah. not easy to, to, to teach young people about uh, sexuality, menstrual health and hygiene. So that's why we come in as Love Life with our Groundbreaker program to complement what the educators are teaching through the CSE. So this is where we are trying to bridge the gap. The gap exists, but we are here as Love Life to say we are complementing closing the gap. Uh, um, the, the age matters of the educators. Yeah. You know, uh, young people feel much easy to open up to people who are of their peer. You know, our peer-to-peer -peer model, it's working very well and we know that it, it's tested in many spaces. So that's why we will have young people going to school to complement educators because you can imagine a 50-year-old teacher, educator, who is going to talk about menstruation where he himself is not glued up, glued up with that. Yeah. So it becomes difficult then, that's why we complement that to make sure that these young people are, 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 are empowered. Where are we in terms of, you know, destigmatizing uh, this whole uh, issue? I mean, we know that, uh, as you said, it's, it's very difficult for the older generation and, and it's still somewhat of a taboo to talk about it in various communities and stuff. I mean, the health department was just saying that sometimes uh, their work is being impeded by, um, you know, the traditional setups in various communities there. But where are we in terms of destigmatizing that and also what more? Uh, that needs to be done in order to make sure that we achieve, we reach that? Um, the, the stigma still exists. Um, uh, it's still high uh, because, uh, you know, when these young people want to think of going to the healthcare facilities, they think of the approach 
that the nurses or healthcare for, uh, 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 workers would have mm. uh, in me as a young person. And, and, and we have decided in our partnership with the Department of Health, we have this Adolescence Youth Friendly Services uh, program that we implement uh, under the, the concept of youth zones in clinic. Yeah. So we, we are doing well in terms of eradicating the, the stigma, but it still exists because the same young people are still going to school, they still have stigma, they can't ask questions related to menstrual health yeah. in a class because it will be perceived as it is my problem, I have that problem. We still have stigma because they are myth still existing related to menstrual health, like, you know, if you use tam tampons, you're going to temper with your virginity, you know, you, you, you are referred to unclean if you, you, you are having your periods. So the, the, the Oki app, it's, it's, it's responding to that because it's an educational component where young people go and get information. We call it encyclopedia inside the Oki app. Yeah. So it guides them, it helps them to track their menstrual health to say by when you will be approaching your, your periods. So it means when you track that, if it comes to your ovulation, young people are able to understand that, okay, if now I'm ovulating and if I meet a boyfriend and have sex without condom, chances are going to be pregnant. Yeah. So it also closes the gap of, of uh, unwanted or planned uh, pregnancies. So we're mm -hmm. working towards that. I mean, in the interest of time, because uh, you know, uh, I know that uh, we've got quite a lot to go through. But uh, before we wrap up the conversation, maybe let's get into that app. Uh, how does it work? Uh, uh, you know, uh, and if a person wants to use it, normally what what do they do? Where do they go? And also, what are some of the features that you find there? I mean, I know you've touched on yeah. Uh, some. Yeah, of yeah, it's it's an interesting app. It's it's the first of its kind in the country for young girls by young girls. So it's a, there's co-creation here. Yeah. It's not created for them, but it has been created, co-creation with them. It has features that are interesting to young people. They just go to a Play Store in their phones and download it. Then they will be able to, to, to sign in, put in their profile information about who they are, and then they go to answer questions related to tracking the, the, the periods now. Then you will say, when was your last periods? You will indicate, then it will tell you, now you have 14 days towards your periods, then it assists you. Then you can go to an encyclopedia, then it gives you more information about, you know, myth, you know, what are the symptoms that I would have or experience. Then it goes to, to we have some hyperlinks where you can go yeah. to other apps where it will give you more information about sexual reproductive health and other information related to, to sexual reproductive and rights. So it's, a, it's an amazing app, you have funky futures, and it's free. After downloading it, continue using it, you don't need to have data or anything. That's the, the fun part of, uh, about the OK app. Much appreciated, uh, Mr. Levadi. Very interesting indeed. I wish we had more time to expand the conversation, but we'll definitely have Love Live back on the show um, in the long run. Uh, Tilibadi Levadi, much appreciated for coming. You're in. welcome. That was uh, Tilivari Livadi, who is the Houteng Provincial Manager at Love Life, speaking to us about the menstrual health and innovative app that is on the market to assist in the education uh, of this issue that we were uh, discussing about. Thank you to my earlier guest, uh, uh, that's uh, Makoloi Nakedi, who is the Assistant Director of Health Promotion at the Department of Health, for having come through and spoken to us about the healthcare system in the country, some of the various challenges that uh, they are facing. That's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV. Or you can call or WhatsApp us at 081 and the rest of the team, it's good night from us. And thank you for watching. But stay tuned for the latest news updates with Mas Chabakobola coming up next. Bye bye.